Greetings everyone and welcome. My name is Lori Laws. I'm a clinical assistant professor at the University of Arizona College of Nursing here in Tucson, Arizona in the southern United States. It is my great privilege today to present a course designed for you on informatics technology, quality, and safety using an integrative competency and concept-based format. I first want to thank you all for being here and for being the amazing people that you are. Let's take a brief moment to arrive together here in the present moment by doing a short mindfulness meditation. So I will bring that up for us and close your eyes if you're comfortable. Sit back in your chat, chair and enjoy. Close your eyes and we'll take a few moments to calm your mind and body. Soften your face, your neck, and shoulders. Do your best to fully let go. And turn your attention to the breath, the calming breath the soothing breath. Take long, slow breath, full and deep. Breathing in, I am calm. Breathing out, I'm at peace. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me in that grounding and centering moment. Today we're going to talk about some of the challenges that we face as nurse educators delivering an informatics curriculum. We'll talk about some ideas surrounding course design, and then we will look at some competencies and outcomes of that course design. For our first objective, we're going to talk about some of the challenges surrounding informatics education. As most of you know, um, the quality and safety and informatics and technologies are essential domains, five and eight, for the AACN, the American Association College of Nursing's criteria. At this time, there is not a standardized nursing informatics curriculum. And there are many barriers to implementing nursing informatics content within the curricular curriculum. Pardon me. Um, I know in my experience that students often feel like this is a, a non-essential course. They don't see the value of technology or informatics, and uh, this course design has been a, a game changer in terms of getting students to see that the technology. Uh, really facilitates the clinical processes and supports patient outcomes. And so it's been, it's just been amazing to go from an, a non-integrative perspective to an integrative perspective. And we'll talk about the principles that are guiding that in just a moment. Um, also, early career nurses in general are inadequately prepared to use nursing informatics tools, and they're at high res risk for SRIS, which is stress related to information systems. That first year into transition into practice can be a very overwhelming one, and the technological challenges compound that transition. Um, also, many entry to practice nurse educators aren't fully prepared to address current and future technologies in their curriculum. So what we're finding is that the clinical, while clinical automations are valuable tools, that can they can also contribute to SRIS because sometimes the rigidity of an informatic system clashes with the adaptive needs of the nurse practicing in a complex healthcare system. So what we find is that we need a balanced conceptual lens through which we teach the social aspects of action, and that would be our patient-centered care and relationships, and complement that with the technical aspects of practice, like the digital technologies and the processes that they facilitate. It's essential that entry-level nurses be able to demonstrate socio-technical approaches in their practice. 
And we, El Selvier, just released the Clinician of Future report, and the clinicians, which were comprised of uh, doctors and nurses, 69% of them felt overwhelmed with the massive amount of data that they have to process to do their jobs. And 83% of those surveyed recommended training overhauls uh, so that we can, as clinicians, keep up with the advancements in technology. So let's talk about how we as nurse educators can start to be part of the solution that we need by exploring a course design, which is our second objective. The course that I was tasked to develop and teach was Nurse 390. It's a quality safety and technology for nursing practice course. This is a two-unit course that's delivered online. I was tasked to use integrative nursing perspective and principles. I also, we use the Giddens uh, Concepts for Nursing Practice textbook, and the two concepts uh, are the technology and healthcare quality concepts. I have considerable experience with online course delivery and um, know how to use the Quality Matters rubric and backwards design, which I'll show you a little bit about here in a moment, to develop competency-based courses that have active and collaborative learning while being fully online. And then there was the, oh, by the way, Lori, we don't have budget to put ATI or Kaplan or any of these external resources into your course. So as you can see by the image, it was like, okay, I am venturing into <laughs> unknown territory. I have this. I can do this. And it required a lot of um, creativity, honestly. It took me a, a minute to really figure out how I was going to accomplish this. And um, what I decided was to go back to the building blocks, go to the Quality Matters rubric and that framework, use a universal backwards design. I decided to leverage the framework of the learning cycle to do that. And I combined that with best online teaching practices and and how to really create individual student instructor relationships as well as building classroom community. So once I sort of got through the fog <laughs> of all of those concepts and ideas, I got started uh, developing the course. And here you can see the two concepts. So over here we have the technology and informatics concept from the Giddens uh, textbook. And I was really interested in right here looking at how health informatics has both tools and processes that intersect. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is where I can probably meet the students in terms of making informatics relevant um, and exciting for them, or so was my intention. And then over here, you'll see in the second image that uh, Giddens used the Donna Bedian framework of structures, processes, and outcomes. And specifically, this is for the healthcare quality concept in which technology was perfectly situated. And so this gave me a launching off point as to how to develop the course using these concepts. And what got really excited is when you start looking at how these concepts are layered and scaffolded throughout our four semester nursing program. We are an accelerated program, meaning that we go for four consecutive semesters and we admit year round in each fall, spring, and summer semesters. So being able to see, so the red arrows you'll see that are the concepts that are that I am responsible to teach in my course, but you can see the interrelated concepts and the ones with green check marks are the ones that I was able to layer into my course to not only scaffold the student learning, but also to align it with integrative nursing principles and a competency-based outcome. And I use this doing a three-module approach using case studies. And so we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, the integrative nursing principles were absolutely integral in, in helping me to align this course um, using, number one, first and foremost, um, that humans, including nurses, are whole humans that with systems and contexts. And they're 
inseparable from those environments and, and those situations and circumstances. And so this really gave me a lot of latitude to be creative in finding case studies that included health information technologies, but also had clinical applications that the students could directly connect to and really interface with how these structures and processes of informatics supports or sometimes contributes to poor outcomes, or it can support optimal outcomes. And so that's what we look at there. Um, we also take a look from a patient's perspective. And so each of these case studies does have um, a patient that the students learn about their context and their health status. And it's, it's worth noting that I teach the um, course that precedes this one, which is their scholarly inquiry for evidence-based practice. So it was a nice pivot having taught their level one evidence-based practice course that we could then pivot into quality improvement methods and informatics combined in one curriculum. So it worked out it worked out really well once I got through the fog maze of how I was going to do it. <laughs> so well, again I use the learning cycle concepts and, and the learning cycle actually comes from STEM um, high school education and and has lots of applications in higher education. So the way that the learning um, cycle works is that students first explore a concept, whatever you're teaching. Now, it just so happens, it was perfect, that I'm in a competency and um, concept-based curriculum program. And so um, this was just, it dovetailed in beautifully. So students first explore a particular concept or concepts. Then they develop their understanding about that concept. And then they apply that concept or put that concept into action is, is how we like to frame it. And so ordinarily when we teach, we, we start with here's the concept, let's learn more about it, and here's let's apply it. But in the quality matters rubric, and when you're going to um, competency-based outcomes, we do what's called the universal or backwards design. We think about the competency first, and then, you know, how are the, what do we want the, the practice-ready nurse to be able to do? What do I want them to be able to do at the end of their first year after they've transitioned into practice? So I'm thinking about those competencies. And then I'm working at developing my course backwards. And so then I start thinking about, well, how can I develop the concept and the competencies so that they're ready? And then what do I need to have them explore in order... Um, to facilitate this cycle. And so it take, if I've used this process a number of times now. I've been in a number of workshops with colleagues here at the university. And so it, it gets much easier. The first time I went through it, I really did feel like I was walking backwards. But now I wouldn't trade it for the world. It's just such an effective way to design a course. So in this particular class, the course objectives um, are pretty straightforward. They're going to identify and apply quality, safety, and technology concepts as they relate to healthcare and nursing and patient-centered care. And in this course, they do complete the Institute of Healthcare Improvement, or the IHI, courses, and they obtain a certificate in quality and safety, which is just wonderful for the students. Now we need to think about the competencies. What do I want the practice-ready nurse after they uh, earn licensure? What do I want them to be able to do? Well, really, I want them to holistically evaluate nursing informatics and health information technologies at large to support the delivery of safe, high-quality, patient-centered care. Similarly, I'd like them to holistically assess complex clinical scenarios and identify potential or actual risks to patient safety and then propose. So what they do is they take this this concept that they have developed, and now they're going to apply it over here, part of the learning cycle, and they're going to propose a quality improvement project that incorporates healthcare information technologies and one or more of the integrative nursing principles. And so what we're really working with here is a complex adaptive system, and integrative nursing principle number one just suits it perfectly. So how do you go about developing this? Now remember... 
We're, we're applying first. And so you're, you're doing this backwards design. And so what I did is I took a look at my competency-based learning outcome, and I broke it into three modules, as you can see here. And so I wanted the students to be able to assess a complex case study and do a literature review and synthesis, and then prepare a PDSA worksheet, all of which are benchmarking assignments where they get a lot of interaction and they get a lot of feedback um, before they submit anything for a grade so they can practice um, freely and make mistakes and have conversations about what they're learning and then put forth the project. So I have three, and then they, after they complete their worksheet, they propose a quality improvement project. So let's take a look at what um, those case studies look like. So the first case study is I, Cerner put out, you can't quite see it in my screen here, but Cerner put out a little uh, patient perspective as through uh, meaningful use. And so this is a short little case study, but it has everything in it that the students can introduce themselves to the health information technologies and processes that they're supporting in the context of patient Tyler and his experience. And so it's a lovely way to um, teach them informatics in a way that is approachable because they love case studies and they don't want to learn about technology and informatics as much if it's a standalone concept. Then they, they have a choice for their second project. They can either do um, the Partnering to Heal case study, which is um, through the Office of Disease Prevention and Health Promotion, or they can do a complex chronic condition case um, through the IHI, which is an extended stay for patient Stanley Longhorn. Their capstone project is, believe it or not, they're doing the IHI advanced case study, the same one that medical students are doing in their curriculum. So our BSN prepared nurses are prepared to sit in a conference room with medical um, providers and collaborate to be the improvement that we need to see in healthcare and know how to either participate in or lead quality improvement projects. And it's just, it's so rewarding. And you'll see here at the end of my presentation what the students, um, how they do with this. So the, the, first, the first process is, again, figuring out how the concept's going to be applied. So here are their three projects that they have um, at the end of each module. And so each of them um, present a PowerPoint and a voice thread presentation and to the class. And they also include mindfulness moments. They identify two integrative nursing principles and they identify between four and ten health information technology components. So how do I get them ready to do that? Well, we're going backwards again, so that's how we're applying the concept, but how are we going to develop the concept and, and so that we can demonstrate emerging competence? So for each of the projects, they get progressively more challenging, but the first one's pretty straightforward. We look at uh, their case study as a complex adaptive system, and we did pick patient-centered health information um, components, and including two integrative nursing principles. Then they identify two um, quality or safety issues or safety issue risks to address, and they synthesize as a team in teams of four. Uh, they synthesize four articles and propose a um, PDSA worksheet. Now for the second project, we do the same thing, only we kick it up a notch by using the Donabedian framework of structures, processes, and outcomes. And so now we're formalizing what that complex adaptive system might look like, um, given the framework that is in their textbook. And again, they do their literature synthesis and they propose their PDSA uh, proposal. And I am with them on Google Documents for all of these components, giving them feedback um, in real time sometimes. It works out. Google Documents has been a great way to collaborate with my students while um, they're in their team meetings, which they do via Zoom. Um, I don't participate in those, but they leave notes on there 
Google documents with these assignments and I can respond to them quickly and answer their questions so they feel confident in this proposal process. In the third project, which is their capstone, which is again that IHI advanced module, um, we're looking at the systems within systems as a complex adaptive one, but we're also incorporating the five whys or the um, cause and effect diagram. And they're starting now to identify rules for the system and what rules would they modify, what processes would they improve, informed by their literature synthesis that then flows into their PDSA proposal worksheet. And in the apply concept down here, their actual project, which is a QI proposal. So now that we've worked back through the apply and develop, like what do I what do I have the students do to explore these concepts? Well, fortunately in my case, I also have quality and safety, so I can utilize these IHI modules that you see listed here to help them uh, learn each of these concepts. We also have um, mini lectures and active learning quizzes. We have a case study discussions that we do, and they have their Zoom meetings that they do. I have a couple of documentaries for them, uh, To Air is Human, which uh, really takes this course and contextualizes it in ways that the students really can connect to. And then towards the end, I have them view the Escape Fire documentary, which again gives them some real-world perspective in an online course. Um, so it's important, I felt, to include that. So again, just a refresher that I'm really connecting the curriculum to Integrative Nursing Principles number one and four using uh, person-centered relationship-based case studies that are in varying degrees of complexity and we view them as the complex adaptive system from which the nurse and the patient are connected and then always, you know, evidence informed, of course, in all things, but it really does connect to the, the class that preceded this one. So how are my students doing? And here's just a refresher of um, the course objectives and competencies that, that we are focusing on. And this now will be our third objective for the presentation. So the student outcomes are, I, I just couldn't be more clear pleased, and I, I say that with humility, but with great enthusiasm, because <laughs> um, this was a big lift um, to develop, and it's a big lift to deliver also. So to date, we've had 221 students. 100% of them pass each of the three projects with a score of 80% or better, and I really attribute this to the scaffold, scaffolded Project one, which runs over six weeks, and they get weekly feedback. There's optional evening Zoom sessions if they have questions that they want to talk about um, in a conversation format. And so we really structure them, particularly in that first proposal, um, to make sure that they are successful and they feel like they understand what they're doing. Because, you know, proposing, whether it's a study or a QI project, is... Um, a daunting task, and I think it's even more daunting for a nursing student, but they're, they're really successful in doing that. And then 100% of my students have passed the course with scores of 80% or better. Well, what do the student course, what do the students say about this course and, and their experience? Um, this is sort of a heartbreaking um, feedback that I got from a student who currently works at a hospital as a CNA. And, and they ask their nursing managers for assistance on these projects so they can gain a better understanding. Sadly, every single colleague <laughs> at this setting um, had never done a QA project, nor had they ever had a coworker participate in one in their entire career of nursing in bedside management. And this, you know, it, it broke my heart, but it also highlights the need for this type of integrative informatics curriculum that is active learning, competency-based, and takes a system perspective. So I'm sad that this student had no mentors out there um, in her, his or her or their uh, clinical settings, but I am glad that um, these students are seeing the connection to this curriculum and in, con in their practice. So they like everything about the class. We got to learn more about informatics and how important it is in today's world of nursing. 
And in in prior informatics courses, they don't say that because they we didn't have them in a patient centered integrative framework, and that was that's the game changer. Another student said it was very interesting to learn about HIT involved in healthcare and how much nurses engage in quality improvement projects, which is a stark contrast to the preceding slide. But So this one warmed my heart, or the other one sort of broke my heart for a moment there. Another student said that the online platform was used so effectively in this course, it really helped their learning. And so students really enjoy... Um, online learning because they don't have to come to campus. They don't have to, you know, drive, commute, all the, all the logistics, um, and they can collaborate in in real time via Zoom with their team members. And I have that integrated right into their curriculum, and they earn points for those Zoom sessions. Um, so that has really worked. And then uh, this last comment was: it was really interesting to learn more about the informatics side of everything. I liked how we were able to be creative in our group projects and come up with our own ideas how to better the nursing field. And oh, that is like now my heart is bursting. I'm so I'm so pleased and, and proud of my students. Um, so we we just met our objectives here. We talked about the background, the course design, and some of our competencies and outcome. I'd like to start transitioning to the close of this presentation. We're gonna go back for just a brief minute and do one more mindfulness exercise as soon as I find the right window for you. Here we go. So go ahead and sit back, relax, close your eyes if you so choose, and we'll do a one-minute guided meditation together. These instructions guide you through a one-minute mindfulness meditation practice to be done anytime, any place. Begin by becoming aware of your body in this moment and the sensations of your body touching a chair or the ground. Now guiding your awareness to your breath. Breathing in, rest with the sensation of the in-breath. Breathing out, rest with the sensation of the out-breath. Breathing in, Breathing out. Meeting your experience with acceptance, friendliness, and curiosity. If a thought arises, simply note thinking and return your attention to your breath. Breathing in. Breathing out. Thank you for joining me in that moment together. It's just been my great pleasure to be your facilitator today. Please do reach out with any questions, comments, or feedback, however you desire it. And then I have left for you on the last two slides, and I will happily email this presentation or the video link to you if you could benefit and you can see all of the resources that I used to develop this presentation just for you. So thank you so much for your time and attention. Until next time, namaste.